Hey there, everyone. My name is Bo, and I'm a found footage fool. <laughs> Tell me the camera thing isn't annoying. Yeah, it's annoying. Welcome to another episode of Found Footage Fool. Uh, if you are unfamiliar with this bonus project on the uh, Dark Parade, well, here's the skinny. I watch way too many found footage movies because I have something broken inside me. And so I try to apply a little bit of science to make sense of why I would ever bother with a lot of movies that are genuinely pretty bad most of the time. So that brings us to the subject of this episode of Found Footage Fool, which is a movie entitled Inner Demons, uh, which is ostensibly about a, uh, a, a reality film crew that's following around this uh, young girl named Carson. And the reason that they're following her is because they are doing a show about addiction and uh, she is clearly on the heroin, the smack, the yayo, the clean burning propane. Uh, that's one for the longtime listeners. At any rate, they, uh, th th when, when they're following her around, they begin to realize that, oh, maybe she's not addicted to drugs or she's, she's using drugs as a way of kind of combating uh, the, the fact that she is also possessed by a demon and the so the question is kind of like well is she possessed is she not possessed but it quickly turns out yes she is in fact possessed and then uh by the end of the movie it just becomes you know another found footage movie um but it, it's an interesting premise and one that i haven't seen tackled before so that's got my my curiosity peaked but to determine the relative quality of this movie I'm not just using a, a gut feeling or a hunch. We've got five criteria we use uh, to measure a found footage film. And we are going to begin with criteria number one, which is, is there a good reason to keep the camera on? Well, as I mentioned in the upfront, this is a movie that is all set in and around uh, a, a documentary or a you know, reality show being filmed. And so, yeah, there's plenty of good reasons to have the cameras on her. Uh, I think by the end of the movie that gets a little shaky when shit really starts to pop off and you wonder like, why are they trying to film this? Like, why are they not just running for the hills at a certain point? Because things have clearly gone sideways in the production of their found footage film. But hey, who am I to judge, right? Uh, you, you do uh, suffer for your art sometimes. And that's exactly what happens. They are 100% suffering for their art. Uh, to the point of being, you know, dead. Keeping the camera on, I would give this like a four out of five. Sometimes the rationale gets a little shaky, but for the most part, totally fine. Uh, then we come to uh, number two on our list of criteria, which is the characters. Are these characters worth following? Are they, are they engaging uh, people? Are they likable characters? And I would say that this movie does a better job than most in doing that very thing of making a uh, the the central character Carson uh, very sympathetic. Like not only is she using drugs, and you know if anyone uh, has an addict in their lives, and almost everybody does, you know it's a, a pretty common uh, ailment, unfortunately. Um, then yeah, I mean your heart kind of goes out to anybody that's struggling with addiction and. Um, her family is clearly, you know, turned upside down as a result of this. And so all of that stuff works pretty well. Like there's the father who's turning to booze to manage the anger issues he has. And the mother who is, you know, completely uh, distressed by the fact that her daughter seems to be slipping away from her. And there's very little she can do about it. So all of that stuff, I think, works pretty well. But that brings us to the authenticity, and this is kind of where you do a bit of a trade-off, because this movie is clearly a little more scripted than some found footage efforts, where they just kind of let the actors riff, and those movies get really aimless and really frustrating to watch because nothing's really happening, and people are kind of saying the same things over and over again. Whereas this one uh, 
definitely has more of a pace. It's got more, uh, more sort of momentum within the, the course of the film. But the problem with that is that you're calling on your actors to sound very real when delivering these lines. And that doesn't always work. Um, I think that the lead actress who is uh, who plays Carson, uh, Laura Bosberg, I think she is totally fine. Uh, she's quite good. But then you get into some of the camera crew, which I don't think is as good. Um, you know, you get into the the priest, I think is okay. The Reverend Foley guy, I think he's all right. But, you know, it, it's real hit and miss. It, it's quite a mixed bag of performances here. And that does go a, a fair way towards sort of breaking the illusion that all of this is real. There is nothing that will pull you out of a, a found footage movie faster than an actor that is clearly not like it's a it's a weird kind of contradiction that when you have those actors who are just clearly riffing and not really saying anything th during the course of a scene that somehow feels more real because it is because it it, it is them just uh you know kind of improving. Um, but the problem is, yes, that feels real, but it doesn't go anywhere. Well, this movie goes places, but it doesn't always feel real. So I think that authenticity, you're looking at like a two out of five there. Whereas the characters, I would say is like a four out of five, you know? Uh, so, you know, keeping the camera on and, and the quality of the characters, both very good. Authenticity is where it starts to get pretty shaky. Um, the watchability is uh, pretty high on this one because there is stuff that happens. There's a, like, it's not just, hey, we're going to set up these cameras and uh, then you're going to see like a door creak at some point in, in the course of the film. Um, you know, there's this progression of, okay, we're going to have this intervention with her and then we're going to take her to rehab. And then while she's at rehab, we're going to kind of further the idea that this is a demon. And there's an actual turn in the film where you realize, oh, this is what happened to her that led her into this state and this position right now. And all of that, I think, really works. It, it, I think the end becomes a very familiar found footage kind of situation and that is less interesting and less exciting than the rest of the movie uh, so it lands on kind of a sour note but I think that in terms of just general watchability of like whether or not the movie entertains you throughout it kind of does it, you know it can be occasionally frustrating because of the performances and, and so forth but it's alright you know um, it, it does get you through to the end of the movie. At no point was I really checking my watch a lot, which pl happens plenty when I'm talking about uh, some of these films. Um, see Delivery, The Demon Within, or The Beast Within, whatever it was called, which is my found footage punching bag here of late. And that brings us to our uh, final criteria, which is scares. Is it a scary movie? Um, not especially. There are a couple of moments... It definitely tries to traffic in some jump scares that I think are real misfires. And there's some there's some creepy imagery here and there. But when it gets scary, you know, at the end of the movie when you're sort of doing that Blair Witch style, like everything has totally fallen apart, things are this is all just chaos and mayhem. I didn't find any of that particularly scary or or even uh potentially scary it all just felt like stuff i'd seen a million times before and wasn't very good and then when you get to the very end of the movie which i won't spoil in case you watch it it was another moment of like uh all right i mean i i guess we all could have seen this coming and i didn't outthink the movie but also it was completely predictable, you know? If I had given, you know, two seconds worth of thought of like, how are they gonna wrap all this up? Which I didn't do, in fairness. Uh, it, it sure felt like this was the logical landing point and I don't think it's particularly satisfying. So for scares, I would probably give it 
eh, like a one and a half out of five. It's just not, maybe a two, maybe a two if I'm being generous. And so at the end of the day, where do we land with inner demons? Um, this is going to be very wishy-washy. I'm gonna give it two and a half. It's real down the middle. Like I don't necessarily recommend it, but also there are things about it that are quite good that are underserved by the fact that some of the acting isn't great and it ends badly. Or not badly, but it just ends in such a routine way that the whole idea of like, oh, this is kind of an interesting idea that uh, we're looking at addiction through the lens of possession. And that can be kind of, uh, if not wholly original, there's at least something to it. There's something to kind of grab onto there. And the guy who directed this is a guy named uh, Seth Grossman who has done a lot of work in reality television and so kind of gets the beats of what makes a reality TV show work like all the you know individual confessions and talking to the family and all that stuff and and all of that kind of works but it just it like that last 15 minutes or so is just so unfortunate in that it doesn't do anything to enhance the experience of the film even a little bit um, yeah, it's a real bummer. Like there, there's a solid hour of the movie that I would probably have given, you know, three, maybe even three and a half stars to out of five. And then by the time the end lands, it's like, eh, th this movie just comes off being ho like horribly average. Uh, it, it definitely has some potential, but it doesn't ever quite deliver on the premise of the film. Which is unfortunate. I think there is something to be said there. You know, certainly, you know, possession as metaphor for drug addiction. It clearly works. That's a great idea. I think a better movie would have made more hay of that. Um, so, eh, unfortunately, this time around, Inner Demons, uh, it's okay. I wish it were better. Uh, if, if you see it, I don't think you're going to be bummed. Um, but I also don't think that it's going to do much for you. So yeah, like I said, real middle of the road, which is unfortunate because it's got a great premise and there, there is a world in which this is a terrific movie. This is just not that world. Uh, we're going to have to go through the spider verse and find the world in which inner demons delivers on all of the promises that it makes. But, uh, anyway, that is it for this edition of found footage fool. Uh, we will be back again because I can't stop watching these. Thank you, as always, for uh, listening to The Dark Parade and supporting the show. Uh, it, it means a, a great deal to me um, that people you know, share the show and review the show and, and respond to uh, everything we're doing here. So I really, really appreciate it. And I, I hope you enjoyed these Found Footage Fool episodes. Uh, this is almost a reality show confessional of sorts for myself. Uh, because I can't, I can't stop watching these. I, that's what I, when I go to bed, that's what I do. I just, I click through the Tubi and the Plex and I'm like, what kind of found footage garbage do you have for me? Oh, this looks passable. And then I watch it. And then you have one of these episodes. That is the life cycle of a found footage full episode. Uh, anyway, thanks again. Uh, I really appreciate it. You guys are the best. Uh, and gals, let's not gender specific anything around here. And uh, we'll see you soon for another episode of Found Footage Fool and The Dark Parade. Talk to you later.